Good evening, welcome to TDM Talk Show. I'm your host, Kelsey Wilhelm. Our guest tonight is Jeff Wong, the Senior Director of Macau and Zhuhai for real estate group Jones Lang LaSalle. With over 13 years in the field, he's handled every area of the field, from real estate development and project marketing to strategic, to strategic planning and lease administration. Bearing witness to Macau's gaming industry rise and subsequent real estate boom, Wong has guided both buyers and sellers in seizing opportunities in the buildup of neighboring Zhuhai and Hengqin, as well as Macau. Thank you for being on the show. My pleasure. So we've seen a very interesting year in Macau in terms of real estate and, and some unexpected changes. How was that carried out through the fourth quarter? Well, I mean, uh, for the year 2018, uh, it's still a good year for the real, est real estate industry. But I think it's a bit unexpected because um, the performance is exceptionally good in the first and second quarter. And after that, um, because the government also introduced some measures and also the uh, change of the um, macroeconomic environment, so the real estate industry also a bit changed. But um, as a whole, I think it's still a very good year um, for the year 2018. In terms of the first, the first half of the year, there was the rise, there was more speculation because of what was going to happen with the new measures. Do you think that the second half of the year has done as well as the first half? Well, I think it has been a change in terms of the nature. Um, in terms of the transactions, we can see that um, in January, February, um, the transaction volume is, is uh, on the higher side. Uh, it's around, I think, um, 1,900 transactions in January and 1,200 transactions in February. Mm -hmm. And after that, because the government has introduced the new measures, uh, what we call the um, extra uh, stamp duty, if you own an apartment, if you want to buy an, the second one or you want to buy the third one, you need to pay extra 5% or extra 10% stamp duty. Mm -hmm. And this, uh, I would say that cool the market and then uh, all the speculators or even long-term investor has been excluded from the market. Mm -hmm. So after that, the transaction volume has been decreased. But I would say that, but at the same time, because the government also introduced some new measures, um, especially what we call the first time home buyers program, and then release the uh, loan to value ratio for the first time home buyers. Mm -hmm. And then it counteract with the what we call the uh, extra buyer stamp duty. So as a whole, the market, I think, is still quite good or quite healthy in 2018. What would you say is the main profile of buyers within the year so far? Well, I think, from the um, first quarter, I think still um, many um, long-term investors are still coming in the market. But after that, I think most of the buyers are what we call the first-time home buyers. Um, from the government statistics, we can see that um, most of the transactions beginning from the second, hand, second quarter, mm -hmm. are over 80% of the buyers are first-time home buyers. Mm -hmm. Now, is that a large change from the demographic that we saw, for example, last year? Um, I think it is more or less the same, but I think the most important thing is that um, because the new measures, I think it released the loan to value ratios. Mm -hmm. And then especially it focused on the first time home buyers and for the property less than 8 um, million uh, mark. So I think it have helped the, um, the first time buyers to enter the market and also I think it helped the transactions uh, very active in terms of the small lump sum properties. But what, in regards to the supply itself, is there enough, since there are measures encouraging first time home buyers, yep. is there enough supply in the market to handle that? Well, I mean, the supply is still quite, um, what I would say, quite healthy. I mean, because uh, we expect um, next year will, there will be still around uh, 4,400 units will on the pipeline. That means they will be complete, uh, ready for occupations. Mm -hmm. But I think after that, uh, maybe starting from 2022, then uh, maybe four to five years later, then the supply will decrease quite sharply mm -hmm. because I think uh, everyone knows that there, is, there are many I mean, land issues in Macau over the past few years, then the supply will be decreased quite significantly. Mm -hmm. But still, I think within the coming two to three years, still, the supply is on the, on the, on the right side. Now, we've heard a lot, in speaking of the reclaimed land itself, we've heard a lot of projects regarding uh, social housing and economic housing. There was yep. a promise 28,000 units which are mm -hmm. meant to go under Zone A. Um, is there any type of blueprint? Have you seen any blueprint for what is going to happen with residential 
on the reclaimed land zones? Well, I mean, um, as our chief executive, I mean, um, uh, and Lance in his uh, policy address a couple of weeks ago, mm -hmm. um, there will be around um, 28,000 units to be, uh, I mean, social housing units will be ready in the Song A area. And uh, he also promised that um, 4,000 units will be um, open for applications in mm -hmm. year 2018. Um, and also, I mean, uh, in addition to Song A, there are still other areas, I mean, uh, ready for um, social housing. For example, I mean, um, the, the, the site in Taipei mm -hmm. and also the site uh, in the uh, old uh, electric uh, company uh, building. Mm -hmm. So I think there's still a couple areas ready for the social housing. So I think um, that should be fine, I mean, in terms of the long-term supply. And also, I mean, because uh, in Macau, it's a bit um, different, say, for example, from compared to Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. Because in Hong Kong, the private market account for almost 50% um, of the total housing stock. But in Macau, it's only account around um, 20 or 22 something of the total supply. Mm -hmm. So still, I think um, the social housing is still, I think, uh, on the pipeline, it still can meet the demand of the, the people, especially um, nowadays, uh, many young people are urging, I mean, for um, the public housing or what we call the social housing services. Mm -hmm. um, and then I think it, it should be able to meet the demand. In terms of the 28,000 units and the other properties uh, of Nida Wailong, mm -hmm. um, do you think that that will have an immediate effect on the actual pricing of housing within Macau? Well, I mean, um, the private housing market and the social housing market are two different sectors. Mm -hmm. um, because uh, based on the um, current uh, scheme by the government, uh, there are two types of social housing. Mm -hmm. One is the uh, rental housing. Mm -hmm. um, this is for the you know minority group or for those uh, people I mean uh, with low income. Mm -hmm. Another kind is what we call the economic housing. Mm -hmm. I think they are ready for sale, but they ha they have the lock up period. And then uh, when they the, when the lock up period expire, they are only able to sell back to the government mm -hmm. or sell back to the applicants for the I mean uh, economic housing in future. That means these two markets are quite separated. Mm -hmm. There's a firewall between them. So in this sense, I don't see any great impact on the private housing market, especially in the short term. In regards to some of the other government measures that they've been doing, they have been taking back idle lands and they've been urging those to be used principally for public housing. Do you envision that the government will in any time put any of those idle lands that they took back up for public tender? Um, first of all, I think, as I mentioned before, the land issue is quite complicated mm -hmm. um, because I believe that everyone knows there's uh, some uh, legal cases uh, in the court right now. Mm -hmm. So I believe it takes time, I mean, to solve the issue. So uh, it's not easy or it's not able to get back the land, I think, within a, a short period of time. Mm -hmm. And after that, I think if the government can get back the idle land, I think more importantly, um, they need to have a long-term vision of what is the best use of those lands. Mm -hmm. um, of course, uh, I think the uh, public housing is one of the ways, I mean, uh, to use the land. But having said that, because uh, we have been set thing a long period of time in Macau, we need to diversify mm -hmm. our industry. I mean, in addition to uh, the gaming or the tourism, still we need to a uh, lot of new uh, industry to stimulate the economy. Mm -hmm. uh, what we call right now very hot is the um, the IT technology, mm -hmm. or even at, uh, what we call the uh, Chinese um, medical mm -hmm. uh, research, Chinese yes, technology, something like that. Mm -hmm. So I, I believe this. All these types of in new industry, they need land. Mm -hmm. And then I think uh, when the government get back those idle land, I think they need to have a, a, a strategic planning, what is the best use of the land in future, rather than just use all those idle land for the housing. Mm -hmm. In regards, I know that uh, in particular a couple of years ago, um, people were choosing to move to Zhuhai because of cheaper prices for rent. Yep. Um, in a couple of years after that, many of those people came back to live in Macau. Um, do you see either a flow one way or the other of people, residents of Macau, moving to Zhuhai because of cheaper prices or them moving back because of increased prices in Zhuhai? Well, I mean, um, the integration between Macau and Zhuhai, or what we call a very hot topic right now, is called the Great Bay Area. Yes. 
I think the integration with the regional uh, cities nearby is a trend um, mm -hmm. that will be definitely will be happen in the coming I mean five to ten years. Mm -hmm. And also the improvement in the infrastructure, uh, we can see that you know in Zhuhai there's a lot of new uh, beaches or new transit. I mean collect to the. Uh, Canton area, like to Guangzhou or even to other areas within the uh, Pearl River area, I think has been built. Mm -hmm. And this definitely will encourage, I think, the integrations. Um, for people, I mean, many years ago, um, they considered to move too high. Um, definitely, as you mentioned, um, the cost of living is one of the factors to consider. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I think uh, most of those people uh, moved to too high will be those uh, retired people. Mm -hmm. I think uh, they, they want to get a better sp a p a space uh, for retirement. But um, right now, because I think it's a bit different, because uh, the further integration will encourage Zhuhai also change into another uh, important hub in the western area in, within the Pearl Delta River area. Mm -hmm. We can see that uh, there are mainly you know, uh, new enterprises enter Zhuhai, and then uh, the cost of living there are also going up. Mm -hmm. But uh, having said that, because right now there's also a lot of restrictions, I think, for foreign people, including Macau people, mm -hmm. to buy property in Zhuhai. What I mean is for residential properties. Um, they, need, they need to live there for five years, and then with uh, their uh, um, uh, mandatory uh, provident fund, I mean, a record mm -hmm. in order for them to buy a residential property there. So I think this type of restriction definitely will, I mean, uh, and discourage Macau people to move there. But I think with the further integrations, I think uh, both the Chinese government and Macau government will try to find some way to release those uh, restrictions and then to encourage um, the people to, uh, to, to travel around. And then definitely this will, I mean, uh, encourage people to move to Zhuhai uh, in future. Speaking of the Greater Bay Area, there's been a push for not only residents of Macau to also live within the Greater Bay Area, but also because of such the expensive pricing in Hong Kong, yeah. for Hong Kong residents are being encouraged to live within the Greater Bay Area. Do you think that that will, for one, do you think it is plausible? Do you think that that will actually happen? And do you think that that will have any effect on the Hong Kong housing market? Well, I think um, the integration of the Greater Bay Area definitely will encourage people, I mean, to travel around. Mm -hmm. But whether they are, will, I mean, live in the Greater Bay Area is another issue. Um, I think uh, with the opening of the Macau Hong Kong Zhuhai Beach, uh, right now is shorten the time from traveling to Zhuhai to Hong Kong. It may be only take around 40 minutes to the Hong Kong airport from from Zhuhai. Mm -hmm. But you can easily imagine that if you are working in Hong Kong, you are not working in the airport. You are working in the CBD area in Hong Kong, like mm -hmm. Central, I mean, like Jim Sa Choi, it still take a long time. Mm -hmm. And also another need to consideration is the, um, the cost of traveling. Um, still, even though, I mean, it, it's not very expensive, but still, I think it takes uh, uh, quite, uh, quite a substantial bus fare if you travel uh, back and forth every day. Mm -hmm. So I think if you take all this, I mean, into consideration, uh, in my opinion, it's not, I mean, uh, very practical right now for people working in Hong Kong to live in the Great Bay Area. But I think this is a way for those people retire from Hong Kong. Um, because Hong Kong's cost of living is very high. Mm -hmm. So I think those people retire, I think it's a good option for them um, to choose to live in the Great Bay Area. And then, but in case they need any help, like the uh, medical help or other help, they can easily travel back to Hong Kong. I mm -hmm. think this is one of the um, uh, uh, good options for them to consider. And uh, we also know that, I mean, the chief executive of Hong Kong, uh, Carrie Lam, also encouraged this kind of um, uh, motion, I mean, in, his, in her agenda. Mm -hmm. So maybe there will be some measures taken by the Hong Kong government soon to make it, this happen. Speaking of, of government measures, the Hong Kong government did introduce measures to cool the market, and that's having a noticeable effect, to the point that there were uh, petitions for them to remove the special stamp duty and, and other measures. Um, is that going to have, is the drop in the Hong Kong housing market going to have any direct effect on Macau? Well, I mean, um, because um, Hong Kong, Macau, even though uh, geographically is so close, mm -hmm. but in fact the property market are two different markets. Um, because in Hong Kong, the major economic drivers is still the financial markets. Mm -hmm. It's uh, very sensitive and also very greatly affected by the uh, macroeconomy. 
But compared to Hong, uh, compared to Macau, because uh, our major economic drivers is the gaming business, and that in terms of the profile of those um, buyers in Macau, I think right now we can, from the government statistics, um, over 95% are local peoples or from local fundings. So it's not that much affected similar to Hong Kong. So I think the job in Hong Kong definitely will have some um, affecting the sentiment in Macau a bit, but in terms of uh, the fundamental, I mean the economic fundamental, I don't see any um, much bad effect in Macau. In regards to the rental market, yeah. um, do you think that it would be positive for the chief executive to have the power to put a cap on the overall rents? Um, I mean, because uh, the rental market, I think, uh, in my opinion, uh, it's not good to put too much restrictive measures on that mm -hmm. because the market will adjust itself. Um, I understood that in the past few years, I mean, uh, many people complain that because uh, the rent are keeping up and then um, because their cost of living are keep going up too, then they are suffering. Mm -hmm. But um, if you're looking back in a longer term horizon, um, back to 2017, uh, sorry, 2007 or 2008, in the, during the financial crisis, in fact, the rentals have uh, been adjusted very uh, significantly and very incidentally. Mm -hmm. uh, what we call the market is very effective. Um, the rent can easily drop 15%, uh, f sorry, 50, 50 50% um, within a year. Mm -hmm. So I think the market is very effective. But if you we to put uh, too much uh, restrictive measure on that, I think the side effect is that, is that uh, this will discourage the uh, landlord to put the property in the market mm -hmm. and which will in turn affect the supply in the market and then that will also be low good for the tenant in the long term. Now there's also a proposal regarding those vacant properties or whether a landlord chooses to leave the property vacant that they would yep. like to impose a tax yep. on the vacant units. Yep. units. Would that be effective in helping the rental market? Well, I think the vacant tax concept is, is, a, is a bit different. It's not a punishment to the landlord. Mm -hmm. um, it's a kind of, uh, in Hong Kong, it's a kind of uh, encourage or the developers to put those units uh, ready for occupation or ready for sale to into the market. Mm -hmm. um, because in Hong Kong, many people complain that um, the developers hold off a lot of those uh, units and then try to manipulate the price. Mm -hmm. But in Macau, first of all, I've, um, because uh, the, what we call, we don't have many big developers here. Unlike in Hong Kong, there's uh, some, you know, very giant payers in the market, they can easily manipulate the market. But in Macau, you know, we can see that uh, many developers in the market, the market is very competitive. Mm -hmm. um, secondly, I think um, the leverage in Macau is also a bit different from the Hong Kong because in Hong Kong there are many uh, what we call the uh, listed companies. Mm -hmm. I think their financial holding power are quite strong. Mm -hmm. But in Macau, um, I mean, uh, most of those developers are private companies and then uh, they need to pay back the, um, the loan to the bank when the, build, when the building is finished. I mean, the construction loan, they need to pay it on time. So I don't see any, you know, what we call the whole of the units and then sell it by, bit by bit and try to manipulate the market, this type of phenomenon in Macau. Mm. So I think the vacant tax, in my opinion, it doesn't help the market as a lot. In fact, I think it will make it quite complicated because uh, the government need to con need to classify what kind of units are what we call the vacant units and then they need to spend a lot of ad administrative costs and effort on that. So it may not be good, I mean, for the society as a whole. Mm -hmm. In terms of the, the units that are in the pipeline and the new, de new developments that are, that are going to be um, completed, we do tend to see a trend in which units are getting smaller. Yep. Overall, there are less T3s and even the size of the T2s, T1 studios, yep. they're, they're overall getting smaller. Are we going to see something, let's say maybe 10 years down the road, along the same sizes as, as we're, what we're looking like at, in Hong Kong? Well, I mean, um, definitely, I think this is a global trend that um, the size of those, of the apartments are getting smaller. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, well, in Hong Kong, what we call the 90 fat, uh, you know, very, very small fat. 
in uh, Singapore, we what we call the shoe box apartment. Mm -hmm. And then uh, in Macau, I think the situation is much better um, because our um, our uh, our law here, I mean, the the building law still, I mean, quite uh, restrictive that you cannot build uh, two small apartments. Uh, and then secondly, I think in terms of the market, still, I think Macau people cannot, I mean, accept those uh, nine no fares, I mean, in, in, in the market. Mm -hmm. But um, what we call, I mean, what we just mentioned is that absolute size of those units is a bit smaller. I believe this is the, the truth because uh, the price going up, uh, you can easily imagine, I mean, the unit way of uh, the residential units I mean, 10 years ago compared to way now, definitely mm -hmm. it has increased significantly. So I think the consumption power definitely also increased too, but it's not as fast as the price. So the unit are getting smaller. This is, this is the truth. But still, I believe it's quite, I mean, acceptable. Um, another phenomenon you just mentioned, it seems that there's much more what we call the T, T0. Mm -hmm. That means the open pan unit. Um, but in reality, we see that these types of T0 unit, I think they are not open panel or, or what we call the studio fat. In fact, after the competitions, I think uh, either the developers or the the, uh, the buyers of the fat, they will do the repartitioning works. Mm -hmm. I mean, they will do the, the to repartition the open pan unit into, um, with say for one bedrooms or two bedrooms. So the overall situation is not that worse as you just said before. What about in terms of regulations? We, we do have a lot of older industrial buildings. Yeah. Do you see that there will be a chance for those to be repurposed and put to use as residential? Well, I mean, uh, what we call the uh, change of use mm -hmm. or we ram of those industrial buildings also is a, a global trend. I mean, uh, we can see that in many, I mean, uh, first tier international cities like in Shanghai, mm -hmm. in Hong Kong, in Taipei, many of these types of industrial buildings has been changed, for example, uh, into hotels or into what we call the loft or even into just you mentioned some uh, uh, residential buildings. But in Macau, I believe this, um, this is quite difficult to do so because a lot of restrictions were well, easily to handle. Um, first of all, because uh, when we need to we change or to rebuild a building, we need to unify the ownership uh, 100%. Mm -hmm. So even though I understood the government right now is trying to amend the law to lower the percentage, but in the near future, I think it's still quite difficult. Um, secondly, is the change of the use. Um, because Macau is so small, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, we don't have very, I mean, um, uh, uh, a very key Songling pan. Even though I understood the government has been doing this, and we expect we will have a outline Songling pan uh, maybe 2019 or 2020 at the latest. But still, because Macau is so small, uh, we don't, we are not easy, I think, to talk about to change a whole piece of industrial zoning to residential zoning mm -hmm. or what we call to the commercial zoning. Mm -hmm. So I think this type of change of use is not easy, I think, in Macau. Um, then uh, I, I believe that it will be only be done with the uh, urban renewal. Mm -hmm. uh, during the re urban renewal, if the government have a plan to change the use of land within a whole area, mm -hmm. then there's a chance for these types of industrial buildings to have a, a, a change at that time. In terms of retail, the, they were saying that the effect of the Hong Kong Joy Macau Bridge is going to be a bit of a, a boost for retail properties. Yep. Um, but that in particular, the ones located within the integrated resorts will see more of a transition from higher end to mass market. Um, aside from that transition, we have more um, we will have more availability coming online with uh, the SJM Grand Kotai Palace. Yep. Uh, we've also got Galaxy's expansion and Studio Cities Phase 2. Yep. In terms of retail and, and for renting in retail, is that actually going to, is the increased supply going to affect the prices for those renting? Well, uh, we have different opinions. Um, in fact, the increase in supply of the retail area is a good chance for Macau. Mm -hmm. um, because uh, with the beach, I think it definitely shortened the distance between Hong Kong and Macau. And uh, the big advantages for us is that we can leverage on the, on the Hong Kong International Airport. Mm -hmm. um, they have many you know, direct flights to many uh, international cities around the world. And uh, when we want to go up our convention business or what we call the MICE 
uh, industry mm -hmm. and a good international airport with many international flights is very important. And also the traveling distance is also a major consideration. Right now it takes around only 40 minutes for people traveling from the Hong Kong airport to Macau. Mm -hmm. So I believe in future our profile of visitors will be changed and uh, especially more business travelers will be coming to Macau. Um, so back to the retail business, um, in the past, we are the, our model is more or less similar to Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. uh, we are focusing on the high-end luxury products like the jewelry, watches, or cosmetics. Mm -hmm. uh, but in future, because there will be more space available, so we can do a kind of what we call the differentiation strategy compared to Hong Kong. Um, every people know that the land price in Hong Kong is very expensive. The rental is expensive too. So many of these types of what we call the real retail is not easy to come into Hong Kong. But I think it's a good chance for them to come into Macau. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, well, you, we can see many real retail models. And then the new models are, com are combinations of retail and entertainment. And there will many new technologies like the VR. Then mm -hmm. we can see that all these types of things will introduce new elements into the Macau retail, mm -hmm. and then uh, this will this will be a good you know move um, for the Macau retail industry in the future. In regards to to the mice industry, you mentioned we've we've seen a very obvious build up. I mean, physically, you can see the change in the skyline of Heng Chin. Yep. How is Heng Chin and its mice industry going to have a synergy with Macau? Well, I mean, um, the maize industry right now still in, uh, is the major driver in Macau. In Hanqin, I think it's still a bit too early mm -hmm. because uh, many of those uh, buildings or those infrastructures are still under consideration. Mm -hmm. But in future, I think uh, we can have a complement to work together. Uh, because in Hanqin, we, we see that there's a lot of good, you know, uh, what we call the tourism resources. Mm -hmm. uh, we have the Cheonglong, you know, the film park, mm -hmm. and then uh, there will be a couple of new, you know, uh, new entertainments, uh, elements, buildings, or film parks will be competed in Cheonglong, or oh, sorry, in Hanjin in near futures. Mm -hmm. So I think we can work together as uh, one plus one, more than two, to attract more business travelers or mice, these types of industry to go up in this part of areas. In regards to next year, uh, we'll, we can potentially not expect to be a, have as many changes as 2018 had, but we will have an election for the chief executive. Do you expect that there will be any major changes with the change in leadership in regards to property real estate? Well, I mean, uh, for Macau, I think the uh, long-term vision, I think, of the government has been um, have been formulated already. Mm -hmm. So um, definitely, I think uh, whether who will be the next chief executive, he will or she will still, I mean, execute the uh, agreed, I mean, agenda mm -hmm. uh, in near futures. So uh, I don't foresee any big changes in the government, I mean, uh, motive, I think in the real estate market in 2019. Mm -hmm. uh, but in 2019, I think the major challenge is the change in the macroeconomic. Mm -hmm. I think uh, the, the interest rate, uh, whether it will go up, uh, uh, how fast it will go up, and then uh, whether the macroeconomy will be changed a bit uh, because there's a lot of, you know, uh, issues uh, within, I mean, the East and the West, and then the, all these things will definitely affect, I mean, Macau economy in 2019, mm -hmm. and then definitely will in turn affect the uh, Macau property market. Given that Hong Kong is much more exposed to that macro macroeconomic change, yep. do you think that Macau will see the same level of change as Hong Kong will, or will we be more insulated because of the gaming industry? Um, I think it's much more, uh, compared to Hong Kong, we are a, a, a bit, I mean, isolated mm -hmm. from, the, from the change. But still, if the change really happens, we cannot avoid that. Mm -hmm. But the impact will be less than in Hong Kong. What about in Zhuhai and in Hengqin? I think it's a bit different because uh, it's still within the um, China's territory. Mm -hmm. So I think um, the Chinese government uh, will is able to take more, I think, uh, active measures whether to support or to restrict the uh, real estate market in case uh, problems happens. So I think the uh, the, uh, the Zhuhai or the Hanjin in is well, what we call what is much more a highly regulated market compared mm -hmm. to Macau and Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. uh, 
then I think the government uh, policy is much more important. But um, because I think uh, the big agenda still, what we call the big Great Bay Area, is mm. still will be is still under progress, and definitely it will be make I mean some significant I mean progress in 2019. So I think uh, the the big picture is that uh, the development in Zhuhai and Hanjin will still be supported by the central government. So uh, the real at Real estate industry definitely will is a major pillar will be support too, but I believe that um, the what we call the speculation on the residential sector definitely that this still will be quite restrictive. But in other areas, say for example the retail areas you just mentioned, mm -hmm. or what we call the um, commercial areas, I think um, they will encourage more. I think uh, companies from Hong Kong or companies around the world to set up their representative office or their real uh, uh, operations in Hanjin Island or in Zhuhai. Mm -hmm. Then that will be change the landscape too. Mm -hmm. Well, we've seen a huge amount of growth so far, and let's see what 2019 has in store. Thank you again for being on the show. Okay, thank you. That's all for this evening. We hope you enjoyed. Tune in again next week for another edition of TDM Talk Show. Good night.